Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Earlier in one of the videos, I spoke about magic methods. In this video, we are gonna explore what these methods are and what you can achieve with this. In this video, I will show you how you can implement double equals and other comparison operators to compare two objects in your own classes. Magic methods are methods that start with double underscores. These are also called dunder methods. We have seen dunder init method to initialize our objects. But why are these methods called magic methods? You don't have to invoke these methods yourself. They are invoked by Python on certain operations. And that's why they are called magic methods. For example, when you create an instance of any class, Python makes necessary calls to double underscore init method to create a new instance of a class. Similarly, there are many other dunder methods. We will take a look at some of them in this video. Let's recreate a text input class, but this time without extending the built-in string class. This one simply makes use of the built-in string object in item attribute. Now, if I create an instance of the text input class with string sample text, and let's try printing this object, you can see that it prints this cryptic looking string representation. Now, if I define the method dunder star, and inside the method body, I simply return self.item. If I execute this code again, it returns this nice looking string. So dunder star method is used whenever we are trying to convert an object to its string representation. Similarly, if I want to call len method on this object, I expect that it would return the length of this string item. But if I run this code, it throws an error with this description. Object of type text input has no len method. So let's define len method for this text input class. For that, we have to implement dunder len method. And as an implementation, we can return the length of the item attribute. Let's execute this code and see, this time we get the correct length of the string. Similarly, if you want to compare two objects of custom build class, we have to implement methods for comparing objects. Let's comment out this print statements and let's define new class person this class will have a couple of attributes, name and age. Let's also define the dunder star method that will simply return these two information as a formatter string, self.name, comma, self.age. Let's create our person object, Alan, with name Alan, and he is 35. And let's verify our dunder string method by printing it. And it looks good. Let's create another person object, ln2 equals person with name Alan and age 35. It has the same attributes as the object we created earlier. I want to implement a functionality to compare these two person objects. We have seen double equals operator to compare two integers or two string objects. If I check if these two objects are equal, I get back false even though they have exact same attribute values. This is because by default, it compares the ID of these two objects which will be totally different because they are two different objects. I want to compare objects based on their attribute values, not their ID. If their name, 
and age attributes are same, I would consider them to be equal objects. For comparing these two objects, I want to make use of this double equals and not equals operators. This can be achieved by implementing other magic methods. This is also called operator overloading. We have to provide implementation of dunder eq for equals and dunder ne for not equals operations. I'm going to compare their name and age attributes. So let's define dunder eq method. It takes self and other person as two objects. In the implementation, we can simply compare if these two objects have the same age and the same name. If they are same, then they are equal objects. As these are built-in integer and string objects, they have these methods defined in them and we are simply using them. Let's now execute the code and we get back true. Let's create one more person, Alina, with name Alina and age 35. Now she has the same age as Alan, but her name is different. Now if I compare Alan and Alina, you can see that this returns false because even though they have same age, they have different names. Similarly, you can implement other logical operators using these methods. LT for less than, LE for less than or equal to, GT for greater than, and GE for greater than or equal to operations. Let's check one more example. Let's define a point class. Let's assume two dimensional point so it will have x and y attributes. Let's initialize these two attributes inside our constructor init method. Let's also define the string method for this class def tenderstr and in the body return the formatter string point with self.x and self.y. I can create point p1 with values 1 and 2. Create one more point p2 with values 2 and 3. Now I want to calculate p1 plus p2 and as a result I want to get the sum of x and some of y attributes for the new point object. At the moment, if I run this code, you can see that it throws exception unsupported operand types for plus, point, and point. So our plus operator doesn't support addition of two point objects. That's what this message means. We have to overload this operator by implementing dunder add method. So let's define it. Def double underscore add. It takes self and other point as arguments. In the implementation of this method, return a point with x attribute as self dot x plus other dot x and y attribute as self dot y plus other dot y. Let's run this code and verify and for sure it returns a new point with x attribute 3 and y attribute of 5 which are sum of x and y coordinates of these two points. Similarly, we can implement subtraction, multiplication, division using dunder sub, dunder mul, and dunder div methods. This web document is a very good resource if you want to know more about these methods. It has categorized the methods based on their functionality. 
there is one more web page which gives nice summary of these methods in this blog post you can learn more about these methods by reading through these web pages i will include these links in the description of this video so you can take a look at it i hope i was able to clarify the operator overloading concept if you have any questions post it in the comment section below i hope you found this video informative thank you so much for watching this video i will see you in the next video